David Coverdale. Oh, I the Blaring Out Show. This is Eric Blair, and I'm here with David Coverdale and Cindy Coverdale. And tonight we are discussing Food That Rocks. Where's the book? Here it is. Absolutely. Yes. Feed book. the world or feed the bears. <laughs> Who are we feeding? Freedom from, Freedom from Tell me, Cindy. How did you get David involved in this? And Actually, my partner, Margie. We lived Margie. together. It's <laughs> unbelievable. He had no choice. I, well, I, 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 no choice. I was thinking maybe some pillow talk was involved, but I, I uh, all of that. Yeah, oh, and it yeah. fortunately still is. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can get me to do pretty much anything if you're this pretty. Oh, absolutely. Your <laughs> well, smile goes along. You're a very lucky oh, man, David. We've known that oh, for yes. years. Oh yes. <laughs> now, my partner had a dream about this book that in the dream she was given the title of the book and that her and I wrote it together and oddly enough a couple nights after she dreamt it we met each other at a party and she mentioned it to me and I thought alright why not let's try it I've never done anything like that and part of her dream was that a percentage went to charity and that was very exciting to me so we went for it. A couple of connections there, and one connection led to another. It was a nice domino principle. Uh, the timing was a bit off um, with some musicians who were preparing to go on the road, and it was great that I was involved to say, well, I wouldn't be bothered if it was, you know, if I was getting ready to do a tour. So there was like no hard feelings and no scenarios. He was really great when we were writing the intros, discussing, you know, doing the little introduction to the musicians. He would look over them and give me feedback if there was something that, you know, no, a no, musician that's a wouldn't. guitarist. He's not a drummer. Yeah. You know? No, not that bad. <laughs> but if they might not like to be described a certain way, something that I wouldn't have thought would be offensive, or it was, it was fabulous. Uh -huh. So he definitely helped a lot. It was Thank very, you, very darling. supportive. Yeah. Tell me about your donation to the book. Yeah, well, actually, we have a great housekeeper who's a marvelous chef, and uh, she uh, prepares this sexy, soulful shrimp stew, which I adore. Uh, so I asked her if I could put it in. Uh, part of my recipes are uh, some friends of mine in a fabulous restaurant in England. I had to put some Eng limey stuff in, of course. And uh, a great restaurant in a place called Genoa in northern Nevada. They cons cons uh, consistently win the Best Food of Northern Nevada Awards. It's a place called La Ferme. And actually, if you're, you're working in L.A., this guy used to run L'Orangerie on La Cienega. So if anybody's familiar with that, they know it's exceptional food. And they were gracious enough to let me use uh, one of their recipes. So my, my recipes would be popcorn, baby. Really? You know. I was gonna ask, that's one of the questions I was gonna ask you is... I didn't know what Pop-Tarts were though, did I? He but didn't? Pop At what point? I thought it was yeah, shady women in pop music. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I didn't know what. We don't have those in England, darling. You're no. missing a delicious treat, but now you indulge. No, no, I have a seven year old. He introduces me to all the crap. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, I have no choice but to indulge in crap. I thought macaroni and cheese was a singing act, you know? Really? Yeah. Oh, come on. You're he pulling calls my leg. Macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Tell me about your wonderful life and your wonderful wife. Tell me how you guys got together, how you met, and what, what's it like raising a child? Well, I was For going to. Rock star. Th well, I love all of that stuff. I'm about to be, become a grandfather in May, which I'm really excited. I have a 25-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old boy that Cindy blessed me with, um, or blessed us with. The, uh, we actually met while I was going through a, an unpleasant divorce. Not that any of them seemingly are pleasant. No, no. Uh, and we met in a hairdresser's in Reno called Looking Good. Uh, <laughs> Looking Good. The only saving grace that it, the street was called Rock Boulevard. And I saw this, I was working the mirrors on this very attractive woman who was, there was a great uh, vibe about her. There was a lovely character coming off her and, uh, and thank goodness after, after overcoming a couple of my problems, you know, I saw the light and, and so did she and we committed ourselves together. It was great. Now, now, my favorite wife. Oh yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> now, my title. What, my what, did, what did you think of David the first time you met him? I think hot came occurred. Oh yeah, it? sexy. Terribly, terribly hot. Was it was it about physical attraction first, or, or were you kind of intrigued by who he was, and then got to know him afterwards? Um, it was the, the really bad haircut I had, wasn't it? <laughs> no, there was definitely a connection. We had a very slow, kind of cautious first year and a half of seeing each other. Kept it very casual. Um, but there was no not being able to see each other. Yeah. We really both kind of tried to not allow it to happen, yes. but it was meant to be. It was against all the odds, Absolutely. to be honest. I was going through a rather messy scenario, and uh, the last thing I was looking for was a relationship or to be making a commitment. And uh, we really, as she said, we had no choice. It just unraveled and unfolded in, a, uh, in the most appropriate way. And we were together many years, actually, before, because I didn't anticipate having a child this, this kind of time in my life. And uh, I was very happy with just having my daughter. 
but uh, Jasper lights us up and we miss him. We didn't actually bring him down, we came down for a couple of mam and dad days and uh, quite, quite having fun. But do you bring it, do you, do you guys go on tour together? Yes. Yeah, you're at the point where now where you don't want to be away from them. Well, I, act, I travel separately from my band, which is nothing to do with the fact that they smell questionable or anything. I just, I like my own space. Exactly. So when my family joins me, it's great. Nobody's being interfered with. And, and my son's a great traveler. He's a marvelous traveler. He, he just, yeah, he moves in. It's remarkable. Well, he didn't like it in Greece. He couldn't understand the cartoons. And actually, like London either. oh God, man, He's London. American, definitely. He said, when are we going, Daddy? And I said, uh, actually, we're going tomorrow. He says, please tell me we don't ever have to come here again. <laughs> London, for God. I said, it's terribly swinging, son. It's funny. So now, what's coming up for you in the future musically? Um, well, actually, I've, uh, I've been inspired. I, I came out of retirement last year to go out on the road and celebrate 25 years of White Snake, and it went. I went out for two months and ended up coming home nine months later. Um, and I've had a couple of uh, people, more independent record companies, approach me about doing something. Initially, I really wasn't interested because the industry is just not anything that I recognize from, from years ago. But I'm working with players who are very inspiring, and I also run a very successful website. And pretty much daily, I have people from all over the world saying, when am I going to do another record? So. It's a kind of obligation, and I write all the time anyway, so if I can put the right deal in place, we'll do something. Right. You always pick the best, the cream of the crop of the musicians that are out I'm very, there. Very fortunate, I'm, and I'm also, I also feel blessed that so many good players are, are interested in working with me. Who would you pick to be one of your co-songwriters? Because you always well, seem to work with the lead guitar player. Well, it's, it's guitar is the primary instrument for rock music. You know, I usually write ballads on keyboards, you know. Um, so right now I've been working with a guy called Doug Aldrich. Okay, Doug. We like connect, yeah, we, yeah, we get, uh, we create, uh, you know, we're creating good stuff together. There's no pressure. I said right now, let's just have fun. You know, if it stops being fun, then I'm not interested. It has to be, you know. It's got to have joy. Otherwise, I'm out of there. And he's great. And uh, I'm, I'm delighted we've connected. I've had my eye and ear on him for a long time. I'm not uh, that familiar with uh, his past. I just heard his work was sent to me several years ago and was very inspiring to me. And Reb's still on, uh, going on tour. Reb, yeah, yeah. He just lives on the East Coast. It's not easy, babe, you know. Yeah. He's the Crown Prince of Porno in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, is that something we should know about? Well, no, but it's hard to say, Maybe. as you can... Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to say when you're in Athens and you're lit and you're introducing him to 20,000 mad Greeks. So how do you take care of this guy? Oh, how do I take care of you? Wonderful. You know, just love him and... Yeah. I don't do, know. Do you, uh, we work together. We're partners. You're partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we then take care of each other. Tell me about the charity. How did you pick the charity for the book? Freedom from Hunger, it was kind of tricky to pick a charity. Yeah, we charity wanted to signing. make sure that the money was actually going to the charity and not just to overhead costs. We wanted something that was global, that wasn't just U.S. based, because a lot of our musicians in the book are from Europe. Um, we did a lot of research, mostly on the internet, and that one felt good. You know, some had real strong religious connotations. We didn't really want to go there. We wanted it to have a broad appeal. And they're based out of Northern California, which is close to where we live, and it just, it just felt like a good charity. How do you keep the voice in check? Um, I don't know. I just... I put my trust in God and go for it, and, uh, and I've been really more sensible with myself for the last bunch of years, certainly since becoming a father. Um, I've, I stopped smoking two years ago. None of this was planned, by the way. You know, all of this just happened. My body just said, that, you know, that's it. No. I became a seafood vegetarian, I meditate, do yoga, you know, all of the fab stuff that I, that I, I would walk past new age book sections in stores and sort of look at people in moo-moos and go, oh yeah, sure, you know, and now I'm in there. Well, I'm wearing a moo-moo and I'm in there and digging the new age shit. You're married to a legend, you know that. And, but I'm fabulous. married to a published author. Uh, Lemmy, when I interviewed him, he said, don't call me a legend, but I mean, you like that title. No, it's, it's something, it's not a choice of mine, I get it, you know. I, I always look upon it as leg end, you know. He has no attachment to any of that, None of it's that amazing. Stuff. Yeah. Very fortunate. I'm very fortunate that I've had a, a, a great 30-year-old career. When I, when I started in this business, basically a musician had the lifespan of a tennis player. You're usually done by your middle 20s if you actually got there. Then you hope to have make enough money to open a bar. You know, but uh, I've been very fortunate. And when you have bands like The Who and The Stones, 
raising the bar to 60. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I can get there, but... Uh, never say never. I'll never say never, yeah. I've learned too it's much to go nice. there. Well, it's, I think it's down a lot to do with the songs, you know. The songs are uh, very special. The Blaring Out Show.